Thank you, Amy. Well, we are going to go ahead and get started today. My name is Mandy C. Toller. I am the statewide CPS coordinator for the Alaska Highway Safety Office, and I also sit on the National Child Passenger Safety Board. We are excited to have you here today. Um, our meeting focus today, our first speakers are Courtney Berry and Vera Foloway, who are going to be sharing information with us about resources that may be helpful to you from the Manufacturers Alliance for Child Passenger Safety. Our second presentation will be a CPS certification update from Stephanie Heitch. Then our last but not least, Tammy Franks, Secretariat of the National Child Passenger Safety Board is going to share information about resources available on cpsboard.org. We thank all of our speakers for their willingness to present today and benefit CPS programs all over the US. Well, with that, let's get started. Um, Courtney Berry became involved with child passenger safety in 2004 and has been passionate about doing her part to keep little ones safer in cars ever since. She's been an instructor for 17 years and enjoys helping people learn the benefits of using car seats correctly. As an advocate, she's had the privilege to partner with Kiko to bring real world issues and solutions to the table with innovative products. Vera Fullaway completed her undergraduate studies at Colorado State University with a major in physics and microbiology. Her experience as a paramedic led her to a career in injury prevention education for over 35 years. Vera has been with Safe Traffic Systems since 2004, and she has an extensive history in the child restraint industry where she has worked as a technical consultant, consumer and customer relations manager, product trainer, and CPS advocate. She led the state of Colorado CPS program as the technical training coordinator for over 12 years and served on the National Child Passenger Safety Board. Her current position at traffic I'm sorry, at Safe Traffic Systems is Regulatory Compliance Officer and Customer Service Manager. And I gotta give a shout out to both of these ladies. They have both come up to Alaska to help us do our CPS conference and I love listening to them speak. So I'm really excited they're here today. We'll go ahead and turn it over. All right, well, thank you, Mandy. Vera, do you wanna say hello? Or she's muted. Hello, everyone. No, I was <laughs> muted. Yes, and I, I forgot where the mute button was. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We have some very exciting news for you. I am going to be manning the chat box while Courtney is talking. So as questions come up, please feel free to type them in and I'll do my best to answer them. And then we can have an open mic question answer period later as well. So... So our goal today is to introduce you to our organiza organization and let you know what support's available for conferences and some other fun things that you can share um, with the advocates and the CPSTs um, that you work with. So let's get started. We can go to the next slide and we can actually go to the next slide. So car seat manufacturers generally employ an advocate. So like Vera is for safe traffic systems, I am the advocate for Kiko, um, and we travel together to different conferences and events. We have a unique relationship. If anyone has ever seen us interact, you know we are friends um, and colleagues as well. So as advocates, we're not sales we're not salespeople. Um, for lack of a better word, I feel like we're more like a specialized CPST. We both really, we all focus on our one car seat, but then know a lot about each other's brands as well. So when we get together, we celebrate each other's victories. We love to see each other, you know, have good new technology come out on their car seats. We're always a little jealous, but we love to see it and we celebrate it. Um, and we also support each other when we might be going through, um, you know, a tough situation with our car seats. So because we travel around the country working with CPSTs, there's, there was a realization that there are common questions being asked and by creating this group, it allows us to answer those questions unanimously. It gives us like one broad sweep and we can say, okay, we all agree on this issue. And when we did that, we came up with harmonized statements. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that later, but it's kind of where we started. Um, but our, also our mission is to support CPSTs. Like, um, like many of you, we're supporting um, the advocacy community because ultimately the safety of children is our priority as well. Next slide. 
This is our current membership. And each year the membership will fluctuate um, for different reasons. People come in and out. And, but we're excited this year, we do have three vehicle manufacturers. It's hard to find an advocate in a vehicle manufacturer just because they're such huge um, organizations and they don't necessarily have someone who just focuses on child passenger safety. Many of you may have um, seen Barbara Birkinshaw in the past. She's been a long time member, but a lot of times the vehicle manufacturers are more like silent partners. But what's great is every time we share information, they all see it. So they always know what's, what's happening and they're like on the behind the scenes of the conversation. Next slide. So what we, we want to talk to you today about is conference support. We do have some other things, but this is one of our um, things that we really want to share with everyone. Um, so if you're holding a conference, what are the benefits of having manufacturers there? Well, first you get the latest update on car seats and projects. We have about, we all have about a 12 minute update that we can share that gives a brief overview of what's new, what resources we have, tips and tricks for installation. Um, and this update, when you have enough manufacturers together, it always creates um, a CEU, which is excellent. You're also gonna get face-to-face -face interaction with the manufacturers. So when we come to a conference, we'll bring our products. So not only will you hear about it, but you can touch it, install it. You know, you can ask questions about something maybe that's been on your mind because you've always worked with this car seat and you don't understand why X happens. Um, and then when we leave, none of us want to take our car seats home because they're bulky and that costs more money. So we generally will leave them at the conference for demo seats so you can improve your trailers for um, classes, your demo seat trailer. You can put them around the state if you have classes around the state. I know every state um, or you know organization does it a little differently, but we do have them and leave them so that you can um, improve your seat um, amount. Next slide. The other thing that we started, that we tried to start, I guess I should say last year, is we decided we wanted to be able to offer more CEUs when we come to conferences. We're there, we're always available, we can always do more. So um, last year we met in February before everything got shut down and we developed some CEUs. Um, and we also had some in our back pocket, but I just wanted to tell you what we offer. Um, we currently have really one that's good for a virtual. It's our harmonized statements. That CEU kind of dials down into the harmonized statements, talks about, you know, just the details of it. It also talks about some hot topics. So maybe things that we don't all agree on, but that you can still, um, you still might have questions about. Then we have, um, let's see, then we have ones that are just lecture. So when we looked at the lecture, um, oh, sorry, two others that are lecture, the compliant, non-compliant and counterfeit CEU. This one takes text down the rabbit hole of seats out there that may be non-compliant or counterfeit. And it gives you some tools to help identify those seats. Then our other lecture one is MACPS, the evolution of consumer driven innovation, which Vera and I are a little excited about because we just thought of it um, a couple months ago. And we really wanted to look at, you know, as a result of, you know, consumers needing, wanting things safer or convenient or, you know, having a better installation, then car seat companies look at that issue, they address that issue, and they come up with new innovations. So that CEU is going to look at those things. But then most of them are interactive. We, we know it's hard to sit in a conference all day. And so this is kind of the after lunch sleepy time moment where you can have more interactive um, CEUs. So we have um, the deconstructing car seats. This basically breaks down the car seat into layers. So looking for labels, looking for, um, you know, like the EPS foam, different layers. So we're actually gonna strip down a car seat and your team is gonna look for those different topics and then move to the next car seat and maybe redress it. So, um, so that's a really good one to get you in there and get your hands on some of those car seats. Um, the brain teasers is a trivia game. 
And so techs can work in teams or as individuals to win a prize. And then MACPS DIY is building a new car seat. So we, the techs, they work in a groups to design their own car seat. Um, and this will be given, you'll be given parameters like the federal standards, a budget, other issues manufacturers come upon when you say, but why can't this just be on all the seats? Like this is gonna help, you know, when you develop your seat, you're gonna see what do you have to give up to have this other thing? So that's a really fun one. And then last we have the scavenger hunt because the manufacturers are at the conference and um, their seats and their products are there. Whoever is at your conference will create a um, scavenger hunt that goes with their seats. So then the techs can move around the room. And instead of just walking by going, that's really pretty fabric. We actually are asking them a question about that seat and they have to seek out that answer. Um, so as you can see, our goal is really to use what, what is present at the conference and, um, you know, just for text to be able to get a little bit deeper into the technology. Now you can switch it. All right. So next thing. Okay. So I wanted to take you because now you all are thinking, where has MACPN been all these years? Well, you know where we've been? Safe Ride News website. So if you go to saferidenews.com and you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see the MACPS logo. And when you click on that, um, you will see um, our, little, our little pocket. And I think if you click on this, it might be interactive. I'm not sure it was supposed to be. See, there we go. So I'm going to go through each of these links just to let you know what is on the website, and I definitely encourage you to go check it out. So the first um, arrow is pointing at our harmonized statements. This is a great one that you can share with your technicians. It's printable. You can have it at, you know, distribute it, have it at a seat check, but it's a nice, um, a nice simple way to see what our harmonized statements are. The next one. So this is our calendar. So if you click on this, any conference that has invited us and um, we will put it on the calendar. So if you're trying to plan when you wanna do a conference, you can see, um, oh, this is when the Kids in Motion conference is. The tech, we won't be able to get any manufacturers there if that's one of your goals. So you might wanna pick a different date. So it just kind of helps guide you with the date. Once you've picked your date, click the next one. Then we have a request form. So the speaker request form is going to ask you for the date, um, the location. It's going to ask you the closest airport that we can fly into. It's going to ask you um, things that, um, you know, just those details. One of the important questions it does ask, and it can be an issue if a tech, um, a manufacturer can come or not, is how many people um, will be attending your conference. Please be as truthful as possible. Um, we did do a conference one time where they there was a promise of large numbers and they weren't. And it's hard because our, um, our manufacturer is paying for our travel time, our time, um, the product that comes out. And so we definitely wanna be you know, efficient with those dollars. Um, so that is um, pretty much the basic of like what is on that form. Does anybody have any questions? Cause this is kind of like from this point on, we're gonna talk about some other things, but I didn't know if you guys have some more questions about conferences. Courtney, there was a question that came up about not all of us agreeing for the harmonized statements and some of the other uh, things that we put together for uh, continuing education. I think, that was a misunderstanding. There are topics that not all of the companies can make a harmonized statement about. We typically Sorry. will try to stay away from those topics. If it's a topic that's worth publishing, then we will put on there to check each individual manufacturer's instructions for the vehicle or for the car seat. So the topic is presented anyway, it's just that the audience is directed to do a little bit more research. So for example, in the CEU, it be, would be a hot topic like um, crotch rolls, side rolls, head rolls. Everyone has a different rule about it. So we just kind of talk about 
those that issue, but then we say, you know, check with that person. Harmonize statements we agree with. Anybody else? All right, let's move on then. Um, so if you go to the next one, what should you as a caregiver expect from a CPS technician? This is a printable that you can print and it's great for parents to know what is gonna happen at um, a seat check. And so it kind of gives them a nice outline and you are welcome to use that. And last, the last little link, which is amazing. Um, this is a little nugget of gold. The membership list gives you access to the advocates. So on there, for example, if you were at a car seat check and you had a question about a Kiko car seat, my, my email's on there and or customer services. I have customer services phone number on there. Um, so either way, you can get access to us instead of trying to go through all the other hoops that might um, exist. So that's a list that I often tell people to keep in their kit when they're at a car seat check. All right, next slide. The last thing that I wanna to talk to you about that's on our website is the CPS Hall of Fame. Um, so this is a place where you can nominate people who may have been an integral part of child passenger safety um, where you live um, or in your state. So the nominations this year have just closed, but the, when they open next year, I would encourage you to check it out um, to see what you would need to nominate somebody if you have someone in mind. Also though, if you just like are a history buff, there is some incredible people already nominated into the Hall of Fame and it's a real history of child passenger safety. So if you wanna check that out, I um, strongly encourage you and we're always looking for new nominations. And the last slide. Here's our contact information. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you think of any CEUs that you think would be amazing for us to do, we're always looking for other ideas. Um, the great thing is we have enough CEUs that if you haven't ever done a conference before, um, we can do it. Like we can be your CEU people. Um, you don't have to necessarily think that up. So we're definitely here to support you. If you've experienced a conference where we've been at, we all work together. If we have a technical difficulty, it's very easy for us to float in and out, like change to a different CEU so that this person can get their whatever fixed. Um, we've even had situations like Vera one time, she got sick and so we took over her CEU. So we all can cover each other. And it's, so it's a nice group to have when you're trying to do um, um, a conference. I do see that our, our reps traveling to conferences now are staying home because of the pandemic. Vera and I will go anywhere, anytime. Just kidding. No, we are, it's some, co some companies are not traveling. I don't, but I feel like most of the advocates can travel. I haven't heard that anyone can't travel. Vera, have you heard anything different? There are some companies that are limiting the amount of travel that they're that their employees are doing and there are oh excuse me and other companies and other co there are, aren't very many that are absolutely prohibiting travel the companies that are prohibiting travel aren't going to affect you anyway because those are the people that don't teach on the curriculum committee and i also wanted to say too if you um, fill out an application to get or like fill out the form to have the me the membership alerted that you're having a conference and you're inviting us, please also note that not every manufacturer is a part of MACPS. So if you're interested in some of the other ones, you may have to invite them individually, but I just don't want you to feel like, hey, why didn't this one, why didn't this one respond? Well, it could be because they're not a part of the membership. So just be aware that you might want to double check the membership. Any questions? This is Mandy. I don't see a question, but I did want to highlight that um, JJ Morrison said the calendar is an awesome resource. I've been able to attend or register for several conferences, including yeah. virtual, that I would not have been able to attend in person. Um, That's a really good point because the virtual ones, every anyone can sign. We, I think <laughs> we were at one, and they they had five hundred people, and they they don't have that many texts. You know, they they've never had a in person conference with five hundred. So um, they definitely had people from all around the country, which is kind of fun. 
you know, I think that we've had a lot of opportunity to um, have some new experiences with CPS, and that is just one of them, is attending a, a conference in another state. Yeah. What, what an opportunity. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for your time. And, you know, hopefully we'll be seeing you in the future. Well, Courtney and Vera, thank you so much for being with us today. And I have to tell you, I cannot say how how helpful they have been at conferences that I've held. They help each other out, everyone's working together and it's it's really a great way to um, promote CPS and to maintain um, technician certification in your state. So thank you both for being here today. We really appreciate that. We are going to move on to our next presentation by Stephanie Heich with Safe Kids Certification. Um, she's a certification associate with Safe Kids Worldwide. And Stephanie, I'm hoping you'll tell us just a little bit about you before we get started. You bet. Thanks, Mandy. And thank you all for having me on. And I was looking over the list of those of you that are on today. And I noticed that there are many of you that I've had the opportunity to work with in one way or another. So I appreciate that. And um, so my name is Stephanie Heitch, as Mandy said, and I've been with Safe Kids Worldwide for almost going on two years now. And before that, I was 19 years in Wyoming. I was the uh, Safe Kids Wyoming state coordinator as well as their CPS training coordinator. So I trained, um, was coordinating all of their certification trainings, their renewal courses, their update courses. And then I did not really want to leave Wyoming, but my husband um, is a pastor and got a call to go over to Africa. And so we went over there and came back after seven months due to a civil war. And then I had the privilege to being a part of Safe Kids Worldwide with the certification department. So I'm really happy to be with you all today. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the certification program and some of the updates. And when you get a hold of me, uh, my top priorities with Safe Kids Worldwide are the webinars that you will see and you will hear. We try to do at least once a month, if not more. We did have the opportunity to have MACPS part one, two, and three. Most of the webinars are recorded and are on the CPS board website. And so you'll be able, um, technicians can go on there and they can watch the webinars as well as take the quiz to get a CEU. Another one of my priorities is CEU pre-approvals. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that, the benefit of having CEUs pre-approved so that in case of audit, technicians know that they have a event ID number and that CEU has been already pre-approved. Anyone that is interested in becoming an instructor, I take care of the instructor candidate applications as well as the proxy applications. So those can all come directly to me and I can help technicians with that. Um, I work with customer service as needed. And then also I'm gonna be talking a little bit today about the State Farm technical update opportunity that we can help with as well. Um, as Courtney said, I was really glad when she talked about taking advantage of the MACPS advocates coming to technical updates, because one of the top questions that I get is how do I form an agenda for a CEU technical update conference? How do, how do I put that together? Will you put that together for me? And probably the first thing that I say is I direct them to Safe Ride News website and say, go on to the MACPS and go ahead and, and request that they come because as Courtney said, they will pretty much put it all together. So um, I think that that's very beneficial. So next slide. So as I said, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the recertification department for you. So next slide. So we were able to, with COVID, we realized that doing seat checks was very hard for locations and for technicians to get their in-person seat checks done. And so one of the things that I really want to talk about is our alternative policy. And there are still technicians throughout the nation that do not realize that this exists. 
And we want to give them the opportunity to know that if they are not able, they can still do their seat checks. But if they're not able to do that in person, then they can submit an additional five CEUs in place of doing those in-person seat checks. They do still need to keep their certificate or their proof of that CEU in case of audit. So whether they're doing the actual six CEUs that are the requirement for recertification, or they're doing these five additional for the alternative, they still need to keep that certificate in case they do get audited. So one CEU will be equivalent to one seat check. And then I will show you in just a minute where they go on and they put that in. We're also asking them to make sure that they're confident in their technical skills, they're confident in their ability to communicate with parents and caregivers, because with this alternative, they're not, we're not gonna be able to see that. And so there is a section that they will go ahead and check that those boxes so that they can let us know that they're confident in their skills. Next slide. So when we're looking at their profile page and I get a lot of questions, customer service gets a lot of questions. The profile page looks a little different for some of us that have been around for a while. And if they scroll down, they'll see the completion box is, is the main thing that they wanna look at. What is the percentage of completion that they are? If they're ever concerned of what am I missing? I'm at 90%, but I'm not sure what I'm missing. That first um, view summary link, if they click on that, they will see exactly what they have put in and what they're missing. So we talked about the seat checks and you can see there that they add or submit their regular seat checks or they put in their alternative seat use for their seat checks. So that's gonna be where they're gonna put in those additional five seat use. Next slide. So when they click on add or submit the seat checks, they're gonna put those in the regular way that they normally would, the date and the instructor who checked off those seats for them. But if they wanna do those additional five CEUs, then they're gonna click on that seat check alternative. And as you can see on the right-hand side, it's gonna go ahead and put in the date and it's good, they're gonna be able to put in the uh, CEU that they did along with the number of hours for that CEU. So we wanna make sure that we remind them that if they're doing that alternative, it is a different click where they're gonna to go to to put those in. If they ever run into any problems and oops, I put it in the wrong spot, they can go ahead and reach out to customer service and we can go ahead and we can, we can change that for them and put it in the right spot. Next slide. We also wanna make sure that instructors, we realize that getting those 20 teaching hours might be difficult right now. And so there's a alternative to that as well. And the instructors can submit additional community education hours in place of their teaching hours. Right now, those community education hours that they can put in are the community education hours that are when they go to recertification on the board site and they go down to the third link, there are many opportunities for community education. And you can see by the chart there, it shows how many they would have to do with how many remaining teaching hours that they've already done some of their teaching hours, but they have remaining ones that they need to do. Then they can go ahead and they can do the community education hours in place of their instructor hours. So next slide. So we always get the question of where do I find these CEUs? How do I know where to go to find CEUs? We put that information in the CPS Express, as well as on our certification Facebook page. And then one of the top places to go to for any of this information is the Safe Kids certification site and all of the CEU opportunities are on that site. 
If they want to get CEUs on the training.safekids.org site, this one, as well as the CPS board site, they need to create or they need to register and have a username and password. Once that's done, one of the top questions that I get is I'm on the CPS board site, but it's not giving me the certificate after I take the quiz. And the answer to that is please make sure you've logged in. Every time you're going on there, please make sure you've logged in. And I'm sure Tammy is going to go ahead and go over that a little bit more too. Next slide. So here are some other available sites for earning CEUs. Um, the Safe Kids Certification site, uh, the Evenflow has a site, Kansas, Texas. Britax also had a site for CEUs. It was currently down for repairs and we are not sure if that one will be coming back, but there are still many opportunities where technicians can get CEUs. Next slide. <clears throat> so I talked a little bit about the pre-approval application for CPS CEUs and why do we do this application? And the reason for it is if they send this pre-approval application, which they can get off of the Safe Kids certification site, and it comes to me and I approve their CEUs, then when they get audited, they have an event ID number. And so when our auditor looks at it, she gets the list from me of events that have been approved. And it makes it a lot easier for those technicians if they do get audited that they have an event ID number. One of the top things that is asked to me though is what applies for approval of a CEU. And as you can see on the first bullet point, it has to improve CPS technical knowledge. So things like um, I'm going to review latch plates and retractors, that would not work for a CEU because it's not improving that technical knowledge. It's reviewing, which is great, but it's reviewing information that they already learned in the certification class that they took. So improving CPS technical knowledge is all those things that Courtney talked about when she showed her slide with the different MACPS titles of their sessions. Things like going deeper into special needs, going deeper into load legs, anti-rebound bars, things like that would improve CPS technical knowledge. And then the participant must be provided with a proof of attendance. They need to keep that on file for their two years of their certification cycle. And each pre-approval is up to one year. And the reason for that is that we want to take the old information off just like we do with our webinars on the CPS board site. Next slide. The application for the pre-approval is very simple. This is just a little snippet of it, but they're just going to basically send in what the name of their conference is and all of those MACPS sessions that Courtney went over, each were approved already and all have an event ID number. They're gonna say when it's happening. And then they're also going to give a description and agenda of what that is, send it into me, and then I will get back to them whether or not it's approved or if I need more information. Next slide. Hey, Stephanie, before uh -huh. we continue, could we ask a quick question? Sure. Um, Denise wanted to know if perhaps you could say more about where to find the extranet sites like Safety Made Simple in the new website. Um, she didn't spot it there the other day. Um, yeah, I think if you, if you go ahead and send me that, I will, I will get that back to you and okay. we can send that out. I think that'd be the, the best way. Yeah, right. let's go ahead and do that. That's a great question, Denise, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you bet. And anytime, Mandy, go ahead and just interrupt me, that's great. So, so um, what happens to a lot of technicians is that they say, I've completed everything, but now how do I pay? That recertify pay tab that you see there arrowed will show up four months before their certification is due to expire. It will not show up four and a half months or five months, even if they have 
completed everything, it will show up four months and then they can go on and they can recertify and they can pay and they will not lose time. Even if they pay three months earlier, two months earlier, it will give them two years from their date of expiration. Next slide. This is our certification team. Um, you can see there that Shoshana is a program director. Wardell, many of you have worked with Wardell. He is our customer service associate. And then myself, and then Debbie is our CEU auditor. And then lastly, next slide, I wanted to go over our State Farm technical updates. And this is something that many states are not aware of. And it's something that is very beneficial for states that are doing larger conferences. Um, as Courtney had described with smaller conferences, this State Farm technical update allows me to travel to those technical updates. It will, State Farm will um, fund my travel, my time to come to the technical updates, to be there to answer any certification questions that come up. And so states can put in for this. So next slide. It's a very simple application. There are 12 opportunities throughout the year that, that a State Farm uh, application can be put in. It will allow for $400 to be used for a conference. It will allow, as I said, for my travel to come and they can use that $400, as you can see there, some of the examples for supplies for their technical updates. Right now, I have not been traveling to any in-person technical updates, but it seems like the window of opportunity is starting to open up for that. Um, so right now, we do have some states that are using this grant for their virtual conferences as well. So you can reach out to me for that too, if you would like. Next slide. So this just gives you an example of what's on the application. Uh, the instructor or the administrator would go ahead and check some of the boxes of what their responsibilities will be, which basically is setting up a technical update. Next slide. And this goes over some more of the opportunities and the, the responsibilities that we would ask that administrator to put together. We would ask that a State Farm rep be um, invited to either attend if it's in person or virtual to be able to give a greeting at the beginning of the technical update. Next slide. And then this also just shows you once more, we asked for a W-9 along with the application so that we can send out that $400. Next slide. And then the evaluation is very simple. We just ask for an event summary, budget summary, the partnership summary, and a media summary. So I really wanted to let it be known that this uh, grant is available because a lot of our states do not realize it. And you're welcome to reach out to me at any time if you have any questions about that. So with that, um, next slide, if there are any questions that I can answer, I'm seeing um, one, I've been getting messages from tech saying that there's approval needed for community education when they enter a webinar for the requirement. When it's community education, there is not an approval. Community education is not audited as CEUs are. We are, we are trusting that when you put in, you've watched a community education, that we are trusting that you have done that and it is not audited. And then what is considered a larger conference, we would ask that over 40, um, that there would be over 40 at your conference in order for, for me to attend. Well, Stephanie, so, the state of Alaska might qualify. Our, our conferences are right at that little mark. So, hey, that's, that's exciting. Thank you for Thank sharing you. that with all of us. You are welcome. And yeah, I hope that we can hear from more of you. And for those that I have had the pleasure of working with, thank you for making my first year and a half so great. Even without Carrie, it's been so great. So thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions for Stephanie? Please feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, 
Stephanie, I do have to say that we have loved having you over this last year. You have been incredibly helpful to me personally. Um, I reach out all the time. Um, it looks like Denise has another question. Do you want to read it, Stephanie, or should I? Go for it. She said, regarding the question I asked about the extranet, I saw the link on Stephanie's slide to answer that question. I think it would be under the sub bullet in the CEU section, online CEUs. However, if you are in that period between recertifying and your next cycle, you can't see that, which was my problem. So I think she found the answer to her question in your presentation. All right, great. Thanks, Denise. <laughs> yes, Denise, I think that all made sense to us and we can also read it to make sure that we, we are clear on what you meant. Thank you so much. Um, we have another one. This is from Maryland Kids in Safety Seats, KISS, aw. Just a curious question, has anyone viewed asking a local rep to come in and speak as an endorsement? I work for government and they are so suspicious. As a local rep come in and speak. I think that's in, Mandy, this is Tammy. I think that's in reference to the state farm representative. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, and that would be on a case case to case, you know, if it would, if it would be something that, um, you know, would be like you're saying a little suspicious or things like that, we would have to work with that case by case. Thank you, Stephanie. Well, we are going to get to our last speaker. Um, again, thank you, Stephanie, for presenting. Um, let me introduce our next speaker, Tammy Franks. She is the Secretariat of the National Child Passenger Safety Board and appointed position by the National Safety Council. We've met Tammy before in these meetings and I'm betting every one of you actually knows her. And we welcome her back to share an update about resources available on cpsboard.org. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you so much, Mandy, I appreciate it. And thank you for having me and actually this uh, first bit of information isn't available yet on cpsboard.org, but I wanted to share some information with all of you about the hybrid national CPST certification training. So uh, hopefully you've heard that last, late last year, the board announced uh, that they will be working on um, making a version of the current national child passenger safety certification training. Um, as a hybrid offering. And this will include uh, different components, um, including um, e-learning, as well as virtual uh, interactions with instruction, uh, with instructors, and then also an in-person component. So we are expecting this to launch and we are currently on track to make this uh, happen uh, by late 2021. So I wanted to share that, but what I would like to share with you uh, is the next slide, please. You are the first to know uh, that we will be offering a series of curriculum, hybrid curriculum webinars, uh, where we'll be, we'll be um, reviewing or kind of revealing a little reveal of the design and, and the delivery of the e-learnings the e and the hybrid curriculum. These will be offered over four days uh, in May. Each webinar will have the same content. The webinars are open to the CPS state coordinators as well as instructors. Uh, we ask um, you would only need to register for one webinar. You don't need to register for all of them. They will be the same in content. So I'll say that again, they're all the same in content. We just wanted to make certain that we provided an opportunity for everybody to be able to participate in the webinar and ask questions. Um, I will be joined by board members in presenting this information uh, to you. And then if you're not able to attend, we will also be doing a uh, recording and posting that to cpsboard.org following the series of webinars. You'll start to see a social media push with these dates and the registration information over the next few days. So please watch for that. Um, and then we will also be including it in an upcoming instructor email, but I wanted to make you aware of it. Um, so please plan, please share this with your instructor teams and promote. This is the time for your instructors to listen, ask questions. Uh, we will be focusing on the curriculum uh, in, the, in this series of webinars and the certification related uh, questions will be addressed at a later point in time. Next slide, please. 
During those webinars, you'll see that we'll go through some demonstration videos. We'll talk about what the tech tips will look like in the virtual sessions. We're going to really give you some uh, an overview of what the e-learnings look like uh, as well. So, and then I just wanted to give you a little update and just say thank you to all of you for promoting with your instructors or thank you to the instructors in your state. Uh, we did a call in late January asking for some help um, with the curriculum. We received uh, offers to do, be module reviewers from 187 instructors from across the country. And I'm happy to report that modules uh, two and three are almost ready to go out for field review. So uh, we're very excited that, that, will, that we're moving forward uh, and we'll, uh, we'll soon uh, involve that first group of instructors in reviewing those two modules. Additionally, we did a call for some help with crowdsourcing of demonstration videos because we're limited in travel uh, at this point in time. We needed to get creative on how to have um, some instructional videos or demonstration videos. And so we did a call to the instructors as well. And we've had over 25 instructors who have submitted sample videos and are moving forward with video assignments to produce content uh, for consideration for inclusion in the, the hybrid curriculum. So we're very excited uh, about this. We hope that you can join us and learn more uh, about this. Um, and we will definitely make certain to include the, the invites uh, for the webinar on the state, uh, through the state CPS coordinators listserv as well. At this time, we do ask though that you encourage that this is for um, instructors and the state or the, the, excuse me, the CPS coordinators and not for technicians. We just don't have the capacity uh, to offer it for uh, technicians. They can watch the recording on cpsboard.org if they are curious. Next slide. So moving on to the resources that are available on cpsboard.org, uh, we have been announcing for several months now that the Car Seat Basics is available. We are appreciative of the support that we're receiving nationally and the excitement. Um, next slide, please. We do realize that, um, again, that there are some, the accessing it is a little bit tricky. So we have created tutorials to help walk people through how to, to become a first time user to access this Car Seat Basics e-learning, as well as a returning user. Uh, I should, there should be an arrow aiming. There you go. Uh, so when you go to the cpsboard.org uh, training, you will see the, the Car Seat Basics information comes up. We have offered, uh, added these tutorials, our how-to guides, next slide. And they are a pictorial guide that walks you through every single step um, and hopefully will get that user exactly where they need to be. We hope that this is a, a short term uh, solution. We are actively working to streamlining the process on the back end of the um, access. And so we're, I'm hopeful within the next couple months I can announce that it's super easy um, and we don't need the how-to guides anymore that they have been taken down because access is so easy. So hopefully keep your fingers crossed. We are actively working on it, but wanted to let you know that we did come up with a short-term solution as well. Next slide, please. So Stephanie mentioned earlier about the CEU opportunities available on the National Child Passenger Safety Board website. And I wanted to share some just some clarifying information for you in case that you get questions. And these are based on the frequently asked questions that I receive as well, um, either through phone calls or through email. So you'll see here, this is uh, cpsboard.org. Oh, sorry, that should say recertification down at the bottom, not training. I apologize for that. So cpsboard.org recertification. Next slide, please. And when you get there, uh, we have been working with Ron Kramer. I'm going to give him a shout out here on the call. I know he's with us today for all of his help and in, in, in getting this page reorganized and really helpful to the user. So you'll see when you go to cpsboard.org, uh, recertification and you scroll down, you'll see this get started information and this will tell you um, how to complete the CEUs and then additionally there's a, a section that's called guiding you every step of the way. Um, so next slide please Amy. And one more. In this slide we have created tutorials. 
So again, these are how-to guides with pictures that walk you through every step. I'm hopeful that uh, this helps to answer questions. So in order to complete the CEUs on cpsboard.org, it does require the learner or the user to create their own user profile for cpsboard.org. The important thing to remember is that this is uh, different or distinct from their user profile name or sign in uh, for their for the certification website. So it's different than what they use for Safe Kids certification. So sometimes we have people who are trying to log in with the information that they have for the certification website. They still need to create a new user profile on cpsboard.org. This system has only been in place for a little over a year. It it launched in early January 2020. So I'll have somebody who said, well, I created a profile the last time I recertified. Um, that they would need to create for this new website starting in January of 2020. And I can search for them if they can't remember, um, if they want to send us an email, and I'll, we'll share that information in just a moment as well. Additionally, there's a how-to guide um, on how to earn CEUs, and it walks you through the selections. There are ample opportunities uh, for CEUs, as Stephanie shared earlier. Uh, in our technical education section, we currently have 12 CEUs available, and there are nine CEUs from car seat manufacturers. So 21 CEUs to choose from. So even if you're doing five replacement CEUs for your seat check, you need a total of 11 for this certification cycle, and you've got plenty to choose from uh, to meet those requirements. Um, we also talk about how to save your certificate of completion. Because again, as Stephanie, you set up a great segue for me. As Stephanie indicated, many people are like, "Where? what happened to my certificate of completion? Where is it? And so there's a how-to guide on how to access that certificate of completion, um, how to print it as well. And then also uh, there's a how-to guide on how to update your user profile password. And the reason that we've included that is because um, when learners are um, creating a profile from sometimes from like a government account or a um, uh, or like a government office or a hospital where there may be uh, firewalls uh, that we may not be able to get the email through to them. It, it gets it seems to get rejected by the system to set their password. So I can do a, a hard reset of their password on the back end uh, by them sending us an email, um, but then they may wanna change their password. So we created a how to update your user profile password as well. So if you have a technician who reaches out to you and is having questions about how to use cpsboard.org, I encourage you to, to remind them that there's this guiding you every step of the way, these how-to guides. Uh, on the board website and the, on the recertification page, sometimes they get overlooked. Um, so I really encourage your technicians to see if that information is there, it may give them an immediate answer uh, to their question, especially uh, if we're not available when they contact us. Next slide, please. This is just an example of one of the how-to guides. Again, we show pictures. We, uh, so that the user knows what to expect um, and walk them right through the process. And then next slide, please. This is a screenshot here that is showing you that for, and you can check with somebody who's saying, gosh, I can't get the CEU quizzes to work. They need to be logged into the website. When they are logged into the website on the top right-hand side there, where I have circled in red, it says it will say howdy and their name since my name is tammy franks it says tammy f <laughs> so whatever their their name is uh, it will show up there uh, right in the uh, at the top but they have that's what they will see and that will confirm that they are logged into the board website at that point in time um, they will be able to click on the link for the CEU quizzes. If they are not logged in, if they do not see that howdy, whatever their name is, they will not be able to log into the board, or excuse me, they will not be able to launch the CEU quiz. If they are having difficulties with the CPS board website, we do recommend uh, that they try the website outside of the network, the internet, the internet network within their office 
setting. So whether it's a government or hospital setting, so on their phone, but if they're trying it on their phone, they can't be using the internet from the hospital setting or the, or the government setting as well. See if they can access it, see if their password, their username and password works. If it does, that means that more than likely we need to be added to a white list. Um, the, the child passenger safety board.org website needs to be added to a white list for that organization. All of this information is also in the right hand column or the right rail uh, of the certification page, uh, the recertification page on cpsboard.org in case you forget, but hopefully this will you'll go, oh, that makes sense and, and you can help uh, provide direction to the technician. Next slide, please. When all else fails, uh, we are uh, available uh, to help you. So you can email at secretariat at cpsboard.org. That email is monitored Monday through Friday. Uh, uh, and I do check it first thing in the morning and I make sure to clear all emails before I leave at night. Um, additionally, within the last few months, we have launched a, the toll-free uh, National Child Passenger Safety Board Program Support Line. Uh, and you'll see the number there, 844-573-6531. Please call. I love getting calls and helping people. Uh, it, it makes me feel like I'm back out in the field and meeting with people, uh, but it also helps to get answers quest or questions answered right away. So please know that that is also available. That line is monitored during central time as we're based in Chicago. Um, and well, I try to return the calls uh, on the same business day or within one business day later. All right, next slide, please. And that, that concludes my part. So I'm happy to answer questions if there are any questions. Tammy, I don't see any questions yet, but I want to say thank you. You know, every one of our speakers today has offered technician support. So as statewide coordinators, how do we keep these technicians certified and who do we reach out to? And having all of these helpful people um, is going to make it easier for us to, to help. And so I'm really grateful for each and every one of you that, that offer all of this amazing support and these websites that are so user friendly. Oh my goodness, we can just find exactly what we need. And I love the how to's, how do you do it? And um, I have read through those, so I know that they are step by step, which makes it easy to follow if you're at home navigating the system. Um, um, JJ Morrison had another question, um, a little bit random. He said, I heard about the um, CPST curriculum update at the Illinois CPS conference. Any update when that might be available? Yes, thank you, JJ. Uh, this is Tammy again. So the board is uh, working on finalizing a, a revision to the 2020 curriculum. It's a small revision, just some updates uh, in some of the activities, the clarifications, um, some updated PowerPoint slides. We are close to having it out. Um, I, I'm hopeful within the next couple of weeks. So I appreciate your patience. Uh, we are actively working on it. We're, we're doing many projects right now. Um, and so uh, we're, this is at the, the top of the priority list. Well, thank you. So I wanna thank everyone for being here. I want to remind you that our next meeting is April 14th and um, we'll go ahead and end the recording, but we will hang out for a few minutes if there's anyone that would like to stay on and ask a few more questions. But if not, we will see you in a month. Thank you so much.